This is episode 12 of the Big Data MBA video educational channel. In episode 12, we're going to talk about the art of thinking like a data scientist. What we hope to achieve with this art of thinking like a data scientist methodology is to help create a culture of continuous learning and adapting. And in order to do that, do that, we must empower everyone in the organization to embrace a collaborative ideation, an ideation process where all ideas are worthy of consideration, a design-centric approach where we seek to diverge before we converge, human-empowered scientific method. That is, we need to teach everyone to think like a data scientist. The objectives behind the thinking like a data scientist methodology is to first and foremost drive organizational alignment. We need to make sure that we have everybody in the organization aligned on where and how we're going to leverage data and analytics to really pot provide value. We need to have a value-focused conversation, not a conversation around data, but a conversation around how we create value. And we need to provide this clear line of sight from the data we have to how value is created. We need to be relevant to the business. We need to make certain that what we're doing up front is involving the business stakeholders in the process to identify, validate, value and prioritize the use cases that can deliver relevant, meaningful, quantifiable business value. We need to empower all the stakeholders. That is not just a data science team, but also subject matter experts to help us in identifying those variables and metrics that might be better predictors of performance. We need to understand and measure how we're creating value, identify the KPIs and metrics against which the organization measures their value creation process. We need to identify exit implementation impediments, the things that are gonna get in the way. And we need to really spend time clearly understanding execution risks. And around execution risks, we're gonna talk about things such as AI model confirmation bias and the costs of false positive and false negatives. So the thinking like a data scientist process is designed to bring everybody together around a common methodology to leverage and empower humans in order to make sure that our data and analytics initiatives, our data science journey is focused on the things that are most important to the organization. So what does that process look like? Well, the first step in that process is to make sure we understand what problem we're trying to solve. What is the business initiative we're gonna go after? Now, every organization, whether you're a profit or not a profit, has a business initiative, something you're trying to accomplish as an organization in the next 12 to 18 months. Maybe it's improving customer retention. Maybe it's re reducing unplanned operational downtimes. Maybe you're a university trying to um, improve freshman retention or improve acceptance rates or improve you know, five-year graduation rates. Every organization has business initiatives and we wanna identify and focus on one and identify the KPIs and metrics against which the organization is gonna measure the success that initiative. What we wanna do next is to identify and bring together the stakeholders. These are all the people who either impact or are impacted by this initiative. And we need to understand from each of these stakeholders, what is their personal and organizational win conditions with respect to that business initiative? And what are their KPIs and metrics against which they're gonna measure effectiveness? Now, one thing you can start seeing already is we're starting to gather a very robust set of KPIs and metrics against which we're gonna measure success. These become critical later on in the data science process. The third step is to identify the, understand the business entities. These are the human and device centric assets around which we wanna build our analytic insights. Humans could be customers, doctors, teachers, students, physicians. Devices could be jet turbines and, and, and compressors and uh, uh, escalators and clutches. These are the devices. And what we're trying to do is we want to identify these entities because these, uh, these are the entities around which we're going to build analytic profiles or digital twins. They're going to drive the analytics we're going to build. So this is really the first part in the thinking like a data scientist process. We're really trying to identify some data science specific artifacts and constructs that we can use. The third thing is to go through a process to identify, validate, value, and, and prioritize the use cases around which the stakeholders are trying to drive to support the business initiative. Now, we define use cases, or I define use cases as basically a cluster of decisions around a common KPI. Now, this is for each a business initiative, it's not unusual to have anywhere from eight to 14 different use cases, these clusters of decisions and KPIs. And what we wanna do is make sure we understand and prioritize those using the prioritization matrix, which of these use cases has uh, the right weight of value versus implementation feasibility. This is a very highly iterative 
process where we bring together all the different users, get them on a whiteboard somewhere, and we're, and we're brainstorming this thing. It is the linchpin of driving organizational alignment because it is out of this process where you now have organizational alignment around not only what use case are we going to go after, but a whole roadmap of other use cases that we can go after and we can start drawing a line for how each use case enables and builds the data and analytic assets to support the next one. The next two steps I'm going to crop together. We want to brainstorm the data sources that we might want to use in order to make predictions about those use cases. And then we want to take those data sources and look for commonalities in the metrics in those data sources around which we can create analytic or predictive scores that can help us to drive the use cases. Five and six is really the heart of feature engineering. And while a lot of people think feature engineering is a data science problem, good data science will tell you right away that feature engineering requires involvement from the subject matter experts. It involves the mining of, of tribal knowledge to figure out how do we build these scores and what elements are we gonna need in these features to drive the scores that help us to make predictions that drive the use cases. Yes, five and six are all about building out the features that are gonna drive the predictions that we're gonna to use to optimize the use cases which support our business initiative. Steps seven and eight, then to actually bring it in together, right? What we're gonna do is from the scores, we're gonna identify what sort of recommendations we need to build and deliver to our useful, our, our, our stakeholders. That is, you know, what customers are, are likely to have tried and what kind of preventative actions can we take and what parts are likely to break down and what can we do to replace it and when should we replace it and who should do the replacement. We're, so we're now taking and boiling all this down to a series of, of, of AI and ML delivered recommendations around what actions we can take that are really driven off the scores. And step eight then brings it all together. It maps the scores to the recommendations that drive the optimization of the use cases which support the, the identified business use, the business initiative. So this all drives, it starts at the high end by understanding how value is created, how the organization measures value and how the stakeholders, how they are involved in their win conditions. And then we slowly go down the process of starting to identify what are the data science, the data and analytic requirements in order to help us to optimize the use cases, to optimize the decisions, to make better predictions, to make prescriptive recommendations that help us to realize the value of that business initiative. Straightforward process, templates to go along with each step, but it takes work. It takes a lot of work. Like I like to say, the reason why I see data science process works, the reason why I've been very successful in the data science area, the reason why my projects tend to work is because I cheat. Yeah, I cheat. I do all this work before I ever start bringing science to the data. Thanks for listening. More to follow. And by the way, if you want to get the book that details out the process, there's an e-copy of the book found at uh, www.deanofbigdata.com. It's an e-book. Um, if you hopefully you'll enjoy it, but it goes through in more detail around all the concepts behind this thinking like a data scientist process. Thanks very much. Cheers.